Okay, so what we got here, we got some sprockets off go-karts. So this one here um, is going on the bottom and this one sits on this shaft on its own. We got different size bearings because we only use what we got. So this shaft was machined for the two size bearings that we got here. And the distance between there and there is the height of our blocks of wood. All right, so then that shaft goes, that sprocket goes on here, which would then turn, um, so this shaft that goes in here. This is, these sprockets were facing this way so that we've got distance between the chain so that they're not interfering with each other. So that one goes on there. Like, yeah. It's never been so difficult. <laughs> Machined it from one no, side. Yeah, from one side. So this sprocket was a different size to to that one. So that goes on there. All right, so that, this one, this sprocket drives that small one. This one drives this small one, which is on here. All right, and once these are all together, uh, then we're going to put this back on yeah, top. Just pop this one on these, as well. Yeah, these have got all bearings on there. The chains will go on. That'll go on. And then once once it's all together, then we're going to weld each one in their position. Each each spacing between here had to be measured to fit the chain. So that one from center to center was 217. This one here was 203 from center to center. Took a bit of working out but we got there eventually and you can't be too slack and can't be too tight yeah. and then what we've got here is our mechanism it's uh what is it called it's called an escapement and so they'll this will be on this shaft here once it's got this one this one here will have the counterweight on there so it'll have a like a a string string or rope yeah something pulling wound on pulling pulling away and then this one up here will have uh, a rod that when it it's clicking over it'll move the shaft individually it's called an escapement um, which we made yeah which we made and so jeff so, this one here you actually put in the lathe a machine that you got the marks from the lathe and then you did the calculation or was it uh three okay, okay so you got to have an odd amount because if when the escapement's working is stopping on one and it needs room for the next one at the bottom to click in like so so three so, five nine something so, like that. so you need an odd amount yeah and um because if you had them both direct and they're both stopping on the same one it doesn't allow it to to flick through so because we got it's a 360 degrees you take your 360 divided by how many bolts so ours is nine which turned out to be 40 degrees between each one and it's important you get that right yeah otherwise yeah the spacing and the timing yeah okay and the heads of these are all going to get cut off yeah and so will the backs yeah and we also have to put a hole in here for a grub screw You just got to make sure you put everything back the same way otherwise it just will not go together make sure it's all to length and stuff yeah because it was a little two mils out last time and it was just too tight
once they're all located, then we're gonna weld these to their shafts. Delicate process. Mm, drop them into the bearings and stuff. Yeah. As you can see, like that one, we could have made just slightly looser. Drop that bearing on there. See how it's come to a hard stop? Yep, that's what those hard stops were yeah. for. And that one's already in there, yeah. so. And then locating them all. Sometimes. Can't be. Uh, this one here is shaft upside down. Okay. Got to get them the right way. Yep. Turn that one as well. Yep. Okay, so then that's got to be centered. This is going to be moved over. So we've got room. On. And then, yeah, we're going to weld and tack those on. That'll go on here. Our other weight at the bottom here. It's going to have a bracket up top here for our escapement to work. And each one drives. Once they're all welded in. Yeah. And goes the first bracket. I think it's in the chain town. <laughs> it's driving it. Yeah, you've got to contact that. Ooh, that's so close. There's not a lot of room. Once we get some tacks in there, we'll take it apart again. Yeah. Alright. The first of many. And then those two to go. I'm not going to film those ones. We've got a couple of new pieces of wood here that have got measured and marked, so they're going to get cut off a little bit shorter than the other ones because it's only one gear or two gears. And uh, yeah, my marking spots for my drill points. All right. Okay, so they cut up. I've drilled my holes, and I've cut the pieces for um, for here, which were a bit bulky before, but now it's all the same size. And uh, I just got to pre-drill some of these so that I'm not splitting my wood and screw it together. And then I can put the gears in and uh, tack them in place. Right, I've done a, a little quick assembly here just to, to make sure I'm going to weld that top gear in place. Because if, if this is slightly out then it's going to pick up on the, and jam on the teeth. So um, that one's already welded in. Just going to tack this one here then take it out and weld it up. But it's been pretty nicely so far, so. And then, and then uh, we, we're gonna put the, the escapement on this side and, uh, and the weight will go on that side. Two more 
Hands in there. So I need to make a couple of these. I've marked them out on here, but then decided it's a bit extreme. So I'm just going to do them a lot simpler, shape them up from there. That way it's just a couple of cuts instead of trying to get them round. See how I go. So what we have here is one of our sprues that we machined. So we've done that so we can wrap some cord around it. These are one of the go-kart gears, which we just welded onto our shaft that we machined. And it's just bolted through two of the holes. Um, in here, the chain was gripping. And so we've put a bit more of a a chamfer on it and we've had to go in a bit deeper because one side of the gear was getting a bit tight I've done the same thing up here you know welded this on in here um, these were those little wooden um, pieces that I made I've now made them in aluminium and they've got a grub screw that holds them in their position and it's best to do it this way that way you can fine tune because originally I tried to weld them on and um, it was too hard to, to get right. This is just a metal um, metal strapping which I drilled a hole in. I've also put a grub screw there, put a couple of holes here and here just to add some weights onto to help slow it down later. This is that bracket I've made which I've drilled. It wasn't a perfect bracket because it was slow so I've I've got the holes, you know, so that it's square to the escapement. Um, I had to wind these out a little bit so that it was touching perfectly in there. You can see it's um, hitting by at least five mil, and then that one clears in there. All right, and then the top one hits bang. All right, and then this this is the weight that helps maneuver it otherwise it just kind of sits there and then on the other side here is where my rotisserie is gonna join up to and um, I've been playing around with some weights and uh, I had to put a set of pliers on there at the moment but I will make some weights to go on the cord according to uh, how heavy my load is I guess and there you have it pretty simple but uh, fiddly. Thanks for watching.